So, Mike, one of the things that you mentioned in your big futures bet was you're betting on Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously, a storied career at Ohio State, the bloodlines. We know who his father is. We, no, sh we, we shan't say his name. We try not to. But there is something, I'm not going to say untoward, but a little off surrounding Marvin Harrison Jr. And I don't know if you guys know this. You can't buy his jersey. Mm -hmm. Not because not it's sold out and it's the hottest uh, ticket on the market or out of jersey on the market it's not being sold you can't go to the team website and buy it you can't even go to the team website and customize one you know say okay i'll make my own number 18 harrison jr jersey you won't be allowed to do it on the website and, and the reason for that is because fanatics that has the merchandising deal with the nfl in terms of selling merch they're currently embroiled in a lawsuit with Harrison Jr. and his father. That's that's where they messed up. <laughs> that's where they messed up. So I've been workshopping a Fanatics take for years mm -hmm. that I've been afraid to share. Because Fanatics is really powerful. They've gotten in the content game. They have partnerships everywhere. Mm -hmm. But also consumers, there's social media accounts out there, consumers have legitimate issues with this monopoly that mm -hmm. Fanatics has over the entire industry. Right. I, for one, have been a victim of ordering several things from Fanatics, not getting what I ordered or getting it misprinted or having some mistakes. Like custom stuff? Not even custom stuff. Like when I was a Browns fan, I had a Nick Chubb jersey where the number 24 was like over here. Like, what? It, yeah, it happens all, the t like, happens all the time with Fanatics. There's, Like I said, there's websites dedicated to it, and the consumers are kind of, hold in the bag here, not just because the, the products have kind of been diminished, but also the creativity on, on championship merchandise, let's say. Fanatics is really kind of cookie cutter with right. some of their designs. Yes. And so they've taken over a lot of the uniform printing and people are upset with this. And I've wanted to share my frustration as Roy and I are big uniform guys. And I know he probably feels a certain way. I think both of our worries were a little bit alleviated with their NHL designs. We were worried about how that would go. Wasn't so as far bad. as the championship merch or as far no, as the actual championship jerseys? No, the championship merch, I think, totally missed the mark. Right. Their championship merch, I didn't buy any of those hats or any of that championship stuff. It wasn't appealing to me. It was all like, if you ask like early stage AI to design a championship shirt, this is what it would look like. It did, it did nothing for me. But I think we're at a point right now where you have to be careful because, number one, Pablo Torre, he's joining us. He should find out about Fanatics because a lot of these, a lot of these partnerships that they have with the leagues – these they're vest invested in this company. Oh yeah, like, there's equity there. Yeah. Like it's all kind of unseemly. So um, my end game here, as I ramble on, Spence is <laughs> if you actually have an issue with fanatics, if you yourself have been a victim of a mis misprinted jersey, and you want to root for the demise of fanatics, they put Marvin Harrison Jr.'s father in a lawsuit. So your time may come. Because that is not something that you do if you want to keep on existing as you are. Certainly, if you want the arrow to continue pointing up, you do not sue Marvin Harrison Jr.'s father. You do not even say his name, let alone name that name in a lawsuit. You do not do this. So, if you, like me, have once opened up a package from that company and been like, Damn it! No! How can they keep getting away with this? They will soon not be able to. So, if you don't know, basically they did an NIL deal with Harrison Jr. that was supposed to pay him a million bucks, and he was supposed to sign uh, 30 game jerseys. Marvin Harrison did sign uh, this contract. Mar Marvin Harrison, it's irrefutable. There was a Marvin Harrison signature on the deal. <laughs> but not not the one that they're, they're suing, the problem is, right? Because Harrison said... Quote, it is not an agreement between Fanatics and me. I was never requested to, nor did I ever sign any document that personally obligated me to do anything concerning the binding term sheet. And so it's what. So, how does the father get dragged into this, I mean? Well, the, in the affidavit, it says that the father is the one that signed the term sheet and not Harrison Jr. And that's who their big beef is. But as a result, they basically froze. All sale of his jerseys, which is crazy because I live in Arizona and like it was a big deal yeah. that they got. You know, As he, it should be. He's probably the the most heralded draft pick they've had since Kyler Murray, and dare I say it, maybe a little bit more than Kyler Murray. Uh, the, yeah. the, the the level of excitement. All the heralds. Right? Fitzgerald was it. probably number one. Yeah, pretty much. Fitzgerald. <laughs> so, this is it's hard to say can't miss because especially with the quarterback position, like 
Andrew Luck was can't miss, and Andrew Luck, while he having a good well, career, he didn't exactly live up to those expectations. Trevor Lawrence was another guy that's this is a can't well, miss it's, prospect. It's early for Trevor Lawrence, but, but Andrew Luck didn't miss. But I mean, he, he retired. That was no one had that in the card at the wide receiver position. If you have one of these guys that are universally heralded mm -hmm. by all the heralds, all the heralds, they usually live up. They usually yes, do. absolutely. And, and this guy is, is, seems as close to can't miss of, uh, of a prospect at that position as there can be. It's like he was created in a lab, when you think about it. it I like, mean, genetically, he kind of was. But it's one of the greatest receivers ever the, the, <laughs> that had a hand in it. The uh, the wide receivers coach for the for the Cardinals. Yeah, but uh, Junior's got so many better physical attributes than his father. His, his father, if you, if you watched him play, you know, very thin. He would catch a ball, go out of bounds because of his frame. Marvin wow. Harrison does not. Marvin Harrison Jr. does not have that frame. He's faster. He's he's better across the board, which is crazy because Marvin Harrison, well, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s father was incredible, an incredible receiver. Yeah, the uh, wide receivers coach for the Cardinals, Drew Terrell, said obviously he's more advanced in that he's almost been groomed to do this since a young age. Almost as if. <laughs> Since the first conversation I ever had with him in pre-draft, he's been a pro. He knows what the expectation is. He's very hard on himself and knows what to expect of himself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like this is this is what front offices. I won't even say NFL front offices. This is what front offices beat off to. <laughs> this is porn for them, right? Like when you give me someone who's like this guy, son of a pro, and carries himself in the most professional way and his elite and talent and work ethic and all that stuff, yeah, I'm going to grab so, some Vaseline and some Kleenex. You, you mentioned that, but like if anybody has any concerns about Marvin Harrison Jr., mm -hmm. it might actually be the father, and right? Concerns? Be concerns because the way? father. Because the father. Because of the lawsuit? Do you remember when Mar uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s father was playing in the league? Because he never spoke a mythology built around him, and everyone, all the commentators, every Colts game, it was like a drinking game. Man, that is a an absolute pro. You yes. want your kid to grow up and be Marvin Harrison Jr.'s Well, father. he didn't speak up until their first Super Bowl. That's when he began speaking. Yeah. Well, other people started speaking. And then you realize, like, oh, this dude is tough. You don't want to cross this guy. Like, there's accounts out there on the internet. I didn't see any of them, but I've heard – rumblings of a slap at a Pro Bowl and, and far worse things out there. So you would – if I were a personnel person in the NFL, mm -hmm. that would really be my only question about this prospect entering the league. Like uh, the bloodline, what, what what's going on there? What can you clear up? So for out the gates, out the gates for his career, he's got this issue with a, a huge league partner in Fanatics. And also his father is now embroiled – in this fanatics thing, it's kind of like, well, we were kind of concerned about about your dad being involved, and you haven't even played a pro game yet, and your name is in headlines in a lawsuit with your father attached. That kind of confirms some of this stuff, doesn't it? I, I think the issue is, again, it goes back to what you started with, which is fanatics, this monopoly of, look, if you want – to wear this guy's jersey, you got to go through us. There is no other way to do this. And it's it's not like they're – it's a Nike jersey, but Fanatics is saying we control the pipeline. Dude, that's that's my main overall issue. When Like why can't I go to Nike town and buy a Marvin Because Harrison Nike jersey? has outsourced the manufacturing of this stuff to Fanatics. Mm -hmm. it, it has a Nike swoosh on it, but that is just for brand appeal. This is a, a Fanatics product. And you look at – the entire sports landscape, everything is like this way, and that is not a fair marketplace. Someone should look into it. Someone should find Somebody out. should look Someone into it. Somebody should, should find it. out. Perhaps. Especially when all these partnerships, they kind of have equity in this. You can understand why what, what Fanatics promises to all these leagues is you don't have to worry about any of the costs. We cover them, and we'll, don't worry about the standard. We got the quality control on lock. But the quality control, as far as me as a consumer, uh, a lover of uniforms and sport, sports merchandise, I think it's pretty irrefutable over the last few years. The quality is dipped. I, I mean, pretty pretty strongly, it's dipped. Like, this is not in, – in terms of the sports timeline, I don't think we've ever had a worse merchandise setup in terms of quality. But also, in terms of convenience, it's never been better. Fanatics is a great website. It's super easy to get stuff shipped to your home. They have great deals. You apply the promo code. Like, 
I've been there. I yeah. I have nowhere else to go though. They they are they are monopolizing yeah. the entire industry. Marvin Harrison Jr. to get back at Fanatics should just wear a blank jersey. Instead of the jersey that they give him, he creates his own well, he jersey. Does, he doesn't get his jerseys yeah. from an. I don't think he can do that. I'm so, saying. So this, this, by the way, this is the workaround that people have been doing. They they begin number eighteen Cardinals jerseys with Harrison Jr. One word, like they took <laughs> away the space between the N and the J. I'm saying if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, you want a Marvin Harrison jersey, just buy number eighteen Harrison two. Harrison the second, right? Like, there's ways around this, ladies and gentlemen. Harrison with two N's. Yeah. It's not like, because there's... M. Harrison. Harrison is a, a common surname. So it's not like they can tell people who want to buy customized jerseys, sorry, your name is not allowed. This is America, Jack. Thank like, you. If Absolutely. my last name is Harrison and I want a Cardinals jersey because I'm a Cardinals fan, there's literally dozens of us here in the greater Phoenix area that support dozens of us Harrisons that support this team. There's a lot more than dozens. Th- whose favorite number is number 18? I used to live on Harrison Court. <laughs> An ode to my old street name, keep, man. Keep in mind, Harrison can also be a first name. Not yeah. a great first name, but it can Harrison be. Harrison Barnes, big Cardinals fan. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, too. Harrison Smith. Harrison, who's Harrison Smith? Oh, safety. Great. Safety. Oh. Okay. Is he a good hall? golfer. Is he potential sneaky Hall of Famer? Yeah. Sneaky Hall of Fame yeah. career, Harrison sneaky. Smith. Sneaky. In that it, it's you had to ask... Who is that? I, I, so it's sneaky in that I like, way. I like, I like the idea of, like, they're locking up the Hall of Fame, and then you hear, like, what was that? And then Harrison Smith's like, nothing, boss. I, I've been here. Yeah. I don't know. Sneaky, I have to keep my eye on you. He's sneaky in the way that you didn't know who he was. Yeah. And also, if I lined up a bunch of people and said, one of these guys is Harrison Smith, I think you'd struggle to figure out oh. if he were even white or black. Dude, that's, that happened to me yesterday with, <laughs> with Robert Craycraft. Or what's Craycraft? River. River. River, River Craycraft. And I was like, Bob, I, I, <laughs> you I, fool for going with a conventional first name. I, His first name is River. Could not, yeah, I could not tell. But I you. also feel like once you find out someone's name is River, you remember that their name's River. No, not really. That kind that of thing. That one sticks with you. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix's older brother. That's I'm how gonna, I call I'm it. I'm going to work on yeah. top five, uh, in peace. top five rivers in sports. We <laughs> oh. in the interview we do. Stu Gatz does top five bodies of water. Oh really? Did anybody do Nile Diggs? Oh no, we did. We just did like Stugatz did like canals, oh, ocean. No. Yeah. He didn't no, do no. like athletes that can know no. bodies of what? No, we were ranking. I, I, well, he didn't have his laptop in front of him he, where he can uh, Google all Stugatz this. Stugatz had canals like really high. Really, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Look, man. Hey, oh, Panama? I love a good canal. Suez. Why do you love a good canal? I haven't thought this bit out, buddy. <laughs> I just love a good canal, and you're supposed to keep it moving. Don't press me on this. <laughs>